Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore. This is reference 26170ST. You can see and you can purchase this handsome steel 42mm offshore chronograph on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch, with additional accessories included in the sale, high-resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this massive, oversized, and trend-setting mechanical monster. This is a timepiece that represents the offshore perhaps better than any other, save the charter references 25770 and 25721. All black dial, monotone counters, gorgeous Arabic numerals applied in white gold with white gold baton and a handsome counterweighted lancet style seconds hand with a no-nonsense combination of case, bezel, lugs, and bracelet. And the bracelet is what really sets this watch apart aesthetically and ergonomically. I can't say precisely, but I would estimate from experience that perhaps one in four offshores leave the factory on a bracelet. The straps are simply far more common, but this gives it more of a tangible link to the original Gerald Genta Royal Oak in that the original vision was a bracelet and a watch perfectly integrated, and also an additional measure of value both in terms of resale and in the sense that you don't need to swap out to a different strap or a water-resistant band if you want to take the watch in the shower, in the pool, or in the surf. So perhaps the truest expression of a devil-may-care oversized sports watch, the model on the bracelet also has the most robust profile and by far the most imposing stance on the forearm. You can see 42 millimeters across the round of the case. This is a big watch and it wears bigger than a conventional 42. You'll note that the watch has, I'm gonna open the clasp and pull it a little tighter so you can see, but the watch has an imposing seat on the top of my wrist because the lugs are 54 millimeters across my wrist, but if you were to measure, again, I'm going to try to pull the bracelet down as tight as I can, if you were to measure the outermost rigid outcropping, all of a sudden, those points that can't be bent down, if you were to measure finger to finger, that's now 58 millimeters, which is downright impressive. And I would say that the 16 centimeter wrist you're looking at is the lower limit for wearing this watch on the bracelet. It doesn't fit quite as compact as the models on the horn back, or if you really want to wear it on a small wrist, the diver rubber straps. It is a slim watch though, relatively speaking, for a complicated timepiece with a modular complication and 100 meter water resistance, automatic winding. I didn't expect it to be only 14.3 millimeters thick, so yeah, you can pretty easily fit this watch underneath a jacket cuff. That's not going to be a problem. It's the distance across the wrist that's going to determine whether this is a watch for you. Do you have an oval wrist? That's good. Is your wrist bigger than 16 centimeters? That's also good. I don't want to discourage you. You could just as easily buy this watch and put it on a diver strap and wear it on a 14 and a half centimeter wrist with absolutely secure fit and I would even recommend you do so because buying the watch with the bracelet means higher resale value down the road. You simply get more Audemars Piguet for your money and you can see that well right here as the bracelet is finished as handsomely as the bezel or the case. When you get this watch on a strap and only the strap, you're shorting yourself the artistry that defines the watch. The movement is nicely executed. The bracelet case and bezel are executed even better. Now I can't feel the step down or the taper of these links. They all feel the same. It feels like a continuous smooth sweep, and yet you can see visually they do taper. That's how fine the tolerances are. You'll also note that there's a polished bevel that runs beautifully along the shoulders, satin finished on the flanks, and you'll note vertically satin finished, longitudinally satin finished on the top. They do have that polished gleaming bevel that continues the swell of the bevel line from the case band and the lugs absolutely gorgeous and ergonomically superb. You can see there are plenty of gaps between the links to aerate the wrist on a hot day, and you can see on the underside that there are broad scalloped portions between the individual links to prevent pinching skin or pulling of hair. You can also see in profile that the links themselves are relatively short, so though the bracelet is physically massive, it feels silky, almost like a Rolex Jubilee on the wrist. That would be my most direct comparison. Actually, I would say the most direct comparison is probably the Rolex President, which has narrow, 
longitudinally, but broad, horizontally, individual links. Now the clasp is substantial. It's a double fold, which I like for a smaller wrist because it doesn't have the one big up and over fold that can pinch a wrist. It's very solidly made, and you can see that it's nicely curved on the underside, so it traces the arc of the underside of your wrist. Now when you close it, it is quite secure, as the watch has a substantial clamshell inscribed with the AP logo that keeps everything seated. You'll also note that there are grip beads on each side to allow you to more easily open it. The watch has has a substantial case, though it is not excessively thick, and this really surprised me. It is nicely made, both in the alignment of the crease lines from bezel down to case back, and in the thoughtful recess of the screws that are used to retain the bracelet. That's the way it should be done on every expensive watch. Screws, not spring bars. For the money you pay for even a $5,000 watch, you should get a screw-fixed bracelet or strap. Now you'll also note that the watch features a fully expressed bezel gasket. This is an element that was a hairline visual element on the original Royal Oak that Genta designed. A manual Getz design of 1993 took that and expanded it to make the gasket itself a structural and aesthetic component of the watch's design. It also breaks up the monolithic expanse of metal as viewed from the side. Now the the vessel itself features a satin top with the hard geometries, the hexagonal bolts, their heads polished in stainless steel. You can see the sharp lip of the transition from the tops to the side. And then the sides themselves are of high polished and rounded. It's a handsome contrast. It works as well on the offshore as it does on the standard Royal Oak. Moving into the dial, you can see that there's a slope down across a tachymeter scale, which also acts as a sort of transitional concave ray hot outboard of the center dial. It features the mega tapisserie embossed hobnail print, and you can see that it actually has a gloss lacquer finish to it. Uh, this watch, sometimes referred to as the Black Themes, is very two-tone, not in the gold and steel sense, but in the sense that it is black and it is silver or white on its dial, and that is pretty much it. So the limited color palette working effectively in grayscale. You'll note that the counters themselves are monotone black with white on black printing for easy reading, and there is a recessed white on black date disc that's, of course, a function of the base caliber being below the module. Also note how the chronograph pushers are in a higher plane than the stem because the chronograph goes on top of the AP in-house movement. Screw down crown. 100 meter water resistance, you get an AP3126 base caliber combined with the 3840 Dubois de Praz vertical clutch chronograph module, which we may stop and reset just to demonstrate. The entirety has 365 parts, pivots on 59 joules, it has a 50 to 55 hour power reserve, it beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, it features both a quick set date and hacking or stop seconds. The 100 meter water resistance makes more sense again when you get the watch on the bracelet because there's never any concern about having to swap this out before the watch gets wet. So again, more carefree, but also arguably more value. Now, what else is important about the movement? Well, it features a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance. It's also a fairly thick base caliber. Those three features combining to make the watch very robust in practice. It's a handsome, beautifully finished movement, and though you can't see it, what sits just below this case back is the ultimate mark of integrity. Beautiful finish where only a watchmaker will see it. In every other respect, this watch is AP through and through. Mechanically, aesthetically, and in terms of its heritage, linking the offshore perhaps more directly to the original Royal Oak, this model on the bracelet is the most versatile of the offshores. See it and own it on our website.